Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to take a look at the cross docking feature in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations Advanced Warehouse. We'll take a look at that when we get right back. So cross docking allows you to, as you're checking in merchandise on a purchase order or production order, if you're if you're finishing a good on a production order, to instead of having to put that stuff away on a shelf to ba basically immediately generate work that will carry that, that item to the bay door or wherever, staging area, wherever you need it to go for final picking in your, on your sales order, okay? So let's take a look at that. Uh, we'll take a look at the setup first and then I've got an example we'll execute. At the end, I'll kind of maybe give, give a couple more of examples of when you might use this. So let's take a look at the setup first on this. Okay, so let's take a look at the setup on the cross docking. So I did have to enable this in feature management. So we click on feature management and then I'll go to all here and and the feature name, if you just filter and put a filter on cross. And filter that down. So this is one that, the one I turned on here. So just note that once you turn this on, you cannot turn this off. So this isn't one of those that you can turn on and off. Okay. So the setup is fairly simple. So what we're going to go is we're going to go underneath warehouse management. And then we're going to go underneath the setup screen, then work. And the first thing we're going to take a look at are the cross docking templates. Go in here. And so what I did was I created a, a template for Warehouse 24. On this particular one, we're going to use before supply receipt in the demand release policy. If you're using production orders, the, the other option, let's go ahead and click new here so we can see the other option, is at supply receipt. When you choose this, the only, only one this works on is for production orders. So what this allows you to do is basically cross dock a production order. If you want to produce the item, finish it, and rather than putting it away, basically immediately ship it. Uh, we won't cover this one t too much today other than to mention that. Uh, we'll, we'll probably look at that in another video, but just wanted to point that one out. All right, so we've got uh, before supply receipt, I put warehouse 24 in there. The demand requirements, uh, you have none, uh, order reservation or marking. Uh, I'm going to use marking today to, to demo this. So I'm going to mark the item. Uh, the other op options you have is work creation. So I've got location directive selected. So I'll do another video on shipment locations later, but today we're going to use the location directive. I can specify a work template if I want to. And then I can also validate via a time window. I'm, I'm not going to do that, but you can set a time window when you want to look for these orders, okay? So then the next part down here are the supply sources. Um, so I've got purchase order here, but you can also add um, transfer orders and production orders to this, okay? So, but today we're going to just look at product, uh, purchase orders. Okay, so that's the main setup. The, the other pieces of setup, you know, we've seen before. So what you want to do is you want to create a work class for this. So let's go under uh, setup and work and work classes. And I've just created one called cross dock, uh, work order type. This is a new type is cross docking. So make sure you select that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go and create a work template. So if we go to the work templates, We've got, again, we've got a new work order type called cross docking. So we select cross docking here. Got a very simple template here with just a pick and put and then our work class ID of cross dock. And then finally, what we want to do is we want to go into the location directive. And again, we're going to choose our work type of cross docking. And I only need a put on this side because remember, it's going to go into the receiving location for my receiving. So it's going to, the, the pick is going to be the receive location. So I'm going to have my put here, uh, warehouse 24, and then I'm just sending this to the bay door. Okay, so very simple uh, location directive. Now one thing you do want to remember as well, if I go into the mobile device uh, menu items, on my PO receiving, or excuse me, my purchase order put away, I want to make sure that I add my work class to that because I'm going to use the same put away for uh, cross docking as I do my other purchase order. Um, put aways. So you can see that the setup is fairly straightforward. This is typically what we do there. You know, you've got a location directive, a work template, a uh, work class. So what we've done is you added the uh, cross dock template there. So really pretty standard setup for warehouse management setup. So 
Next, let's go ahead and uh, execute a scenario. So I've got a purchase order I've created and a sales order I've created. So let's take a look at that next and see how this all works together. All right, so for our example today, I've gone ahead and created a purchase order for us, 1001. And I'm using item A0001. And on my PO here, I've got a quantity of 10. Okay, and it's going to warehouse 24. Now I also have started a sales order. So if I go over to the sales order, I've got uh, sales order 1611 to Cave Wholesales. And then I've got our item number on it, A0001 for two, right? So the PO's got 10 and the uh, sales order has two. So if you remember from our template, our, our cross-docking template, what I'm basing the demand on is the marking, right? So let's go ahead and mark this item. So we're gonna go under the inventory, we're gonna go into marking. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find our PO number, which is our, our 1001. I'm gonna go ahead and set mark now. I'll put two against it, and then we're gonna go ahead and say, okay. All right, so if we go take a look at our reservation, we'll have two um, reserved. So we got two, and it's reserved order, right? So notice it's not reserved physical, it's reserved ordered, because it's on order. All right. And then, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and release this to the warehouse. So we'll go ahead and go release. All right. And it's going to tell us that a shipment was created, but no work was created because the item's not in yet, right? So there's no work created. So let's go ahead and take a look at the shipment here. If we go to shipment details. And if we scroll down, we've got a couple of new items here. So we've got plan cross docking tab and then a cancel cross docking. So if you wanted to cancel this cross docking, you just click on the cancel and uh, that will cancel the cross docking. But let's go ahead and click into the plan cross docking here. And we'll see our information. So we've got our item number. There's our sales order number. There's a quantity. Here's our supply order number. So our PO number remember is 1001 and it's a purchase order. So it just gives us our cross docking information. All right. So let's go ahead and receive that. So let's go into the mobile device and we'll go into the inbound side. And we're going to do the purchase receive first. And we'll go ahead and put in the PO number first. Here, let me just copy that PO number for us. And we'll paste that in there. And then we're going to put in our item, our A0001. And then our quantity that we're going to receive, so remember we, we had 10 on our PO, so let's go ahead and receive the full amount, which was 10. And we're going to say OK. All right, so that work is been completed. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the work that was created on that. So let's go back into Warehouse Management. And then we're going to go into Work and All Work so we can see what was created. And if we look down here, now we've got a cross docking and then we have a, a purchase order. So if we go to take a look at the cross docking work, that's going to tell us to take two of those. So remember, we ordered two from the receive location and then put it at the bay door location, right? And then if we take a look at the other work, this is going to be for our remaining eight. So if you remember, we had a total of 10 on our purchase order. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the sales order, let me go back out of this and we're back on the sales order shipment. Let me close that one more time. We'll get back to the actual sales order. At this point, if we go ahead and look at the work details, we'll see that work. So there's our cross docking work that was generated that's tied to the sales order now. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this off. So the other thing I'll point out here is on these work, I'm gonna go back to the work screen, the all work. And so these are our two um, work uh, records that were created. So if I slide to the right here, notice they're both under the same license plate. I'm automatically generating these license plates, but just do notice that they are on the same license plate, whether you automatically generate them or if you manually enter it, okay? So let's go back to our mobile device and we'll go ahead and cancel under this one. And let's go ahead and do the PO put away, purchase put away. All right, so we're gonna put in our license plate ID and first work it's going to give us is a cross docking pick. So it's telling us to pick it up from the uh, receiving location, the quantity of two. Okay. Now this put away is a grouping. So I'm going to say, okay, here. And so that's the first item that I'm going to pick up. And then the second item I'm going to pick up is the remainder. So we're going to go and put that license plate in again. 
and it's going to ask me for a target license plate. I'm just going to call this um, Scott Test 1. Say OK to that. All right, so then that's our grouping, right? So let's go ahead and we'll say we're done with our grouping. And now it's going to tell us to put at the bay door a quantity of two. So this is for our, our sales order pick. So we've got two there. We're going to say OK. And then if we go ahead and take, let's go ahead and take a look at the work again. So come back here and take a look at the work. So the only one that's left open is our purchase order work. So let me go ahead and show the close work. We'll see that that cross docking there is done. So let's go ahead and do the purchasing work. Get that license plate again. And we'll go ahead and put that license plate back in. And now it's going to tell us to pick up from the receiving location there for a quantity of eight. We're going to say OK. And then we're going to say we're done. Now it's going to tell us to take those eight and put it into location FL001. And then we'll say OK there. And then that's done. So now if we go back to the work and take a look at it, both of those work records were, be were closed. All right. Now the final step is is your normal finish out. So let me let me go back to the sales order. I'm going to close this out, this work, and so we're back in the sales order now. So you do your final wrap up. So so you just go to your shipment. Your your work remember is already completed. So you've got everything picked. So what you're going to do is you're just going to confirm your shipment, and then you're going to generate your packing slip. So this is the exact same process that you should be using on a regular sales order pick. So I don't know if you'd use this on every single item that you ever receive, you know, like you would probably use this on maybe larger items that you're receiving in. So if you if you get receiving big pieces of furniture or big pieces of equipment that are directed for a specific customer, ordered for a specific customer, um, you know, maybe the vendor doesn't, won't do a drop ship to the customer, but and it's gotta come to your facility you're probably going to use this in, or you know to keep trying to put that stuff away and then go and immediately turn around and pick it okay so another thing you know on the production orders if you want to create your, and finish your product and then not have to go put it away this would be another good example of, of when, when you could could use that now i'll probably do another video on that on, on a production order specifically on how you can release it and then immediately generate work for your sales order Yes, that's a pretty nice flow for this, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some use out of it um, in, in, some, in one of your projects. Uh, if you did, please like and give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. I put out a video about once, twice a week um, on, some other, on some type of Dynamics 365 content. So feel free to subscribe so you get notified uh, when I upload a new video, okay? Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.